So there's lots of ways to do hair. You can use XGen, you can use um, fur, you can use lots of different things. This tutorial is just going to be a really quick way to do fast, simple, lazy polygonal hair that actually looks fairly reasonable. Um, the first step is to actually use a tool that's meant for creating anime avatars. It's called Vroid Studio. So you can go to vroid.com and it should forward you to the English one if he uses browser detect. But anyway, this is the app. Go down, download it for Windows. Open that up, run the exe. It doesn't install, it's just a zip file that has everything it needs to run. Let me blow this up for you. So it comes with a bunch of avatars. We're not going to use any of that. We'll just create a new avatar, male or female, doesn't matter. Okay, so got our little anime girl here. That's great. Not going to use any of it. I am going to use the hair editor though. Over here on the left, it's kind of like your Photoshop layers. You are creating groups and within those groups you are drawing locks or strands of hair. It sounds kind of weird and complicated, but it's really simple. So all you're doing is creating, I mean, you can do procedural, we'll, we'll get into that later. Add a freehand group, it creates this net looking thing. This net is sort of your 3D canvas. It's what you're drawing the hair strands on. Click the brush, draw. So you can kind of see how the hair sticks to that 3D net. And if I want to move it, I can click on select and kind of change the surface that that hair is sitting on. And that's all this is right now. That's that's all you really need to do. Over here on the right, there's different options for the hair. We don't care anything about the texture. We do care about this. And so that's all you do. You just create all the hair that you need, fill it out. And if you need to layer it, you can create another group and adjust how that sits. So when you draw hair on that, it won't clip through other groups or it will, it will behave the way you would expect. You'll draw under or over, and that's how you kind of fill it out closer to the head. Um, so you just repeat this a couple times. If you don't want to, and I recommend not doing the entire head by hand, just do half, clone it, flip it. And so eventually you can do the entire head really quickly that way. And if you make a mistake with any one of these locks of hair, you can just click the select tool, get on the group that has the strands that you are interested in, um, in this case, let's say it's this. Click the lock of hair that you don't like and manipulate the control points to get it nice. Like, let's say I didn't like how that one's sitting. Well, I can move it all. And it's all spline based, so it'll do its best job to maintain its shape based on how you tell it to go. If I started the stroke in the wrong place, for example, let's say that's not where the root of her hair is, then I can just do this. Get it a little closer. Same thing here. You get the idea. So let's say that I've done the entire thing. I'm really happy with it. She's not actually bald. How do I get this out and into Maya? Well, you click on camera exporter and it has a lot of stuff. It's meant for exporting the entire thing, but you can actually just export the hair itself. Go to the export option on the left here, and there is a button just for hair. That's what we want. So we're gonna drop this somewhere easy to find. We'll say it goes to temp. We'll call it chin bob hair. Uh, I've already exported a better version of this out. So let's say I overwrote that file. 
And then that's it. You're done with Vroid Studio. So now pop into Maya and you're going to want to import that OBJ you just exported. Oh, but where is it? Well, Vroid uses a different scale than I'm using in Maya. Um, it's using a different axis as well. This may or may not be the case for you. I like to work with Z up, so and Vroid uses Y up. Most people use Y up. Um, it's so that may not be an issue, but the scale is most likely going to be a problem. So you'll hit import and you'll be like, well, where is it? It's actually there. It's just really tiny because it's using millimeter scale and I'm using meter scale. So I know that for my world units and my setup, one Vroid unit is equivalent to a hundred of my. So if I just scale it up, there it is, it's in the right spot. But because the axis is different, it's using Y up, I'm using Z up, I also need to rotate it. Now it's roughly in the right spot, but still doesn't look quite right for what I need. Let's center that pivot. Get it roughly in place. Okay, now it was designed for an anime girl head, so obviously it doesn't fit realistic proportions too well. And so that's where you will sit down and just do normal soft select, push and pull, get it to the shape that you need it to be. Okay, and so eventually you'll get something kind of like this, where it roughly fits, pretty good, looks reasonable-ish, but now the normals are all wrong. You've got hard creases in between each lock of hair. And you might think, okay, well, that's pretty easy. I can just go to mesh display. I can soften all the edges. But then you get this issue because it doesn't understand. It's trying to soften out every edge. And so, well, okay, I guess maybe I can go in and I'll just select the edges I want to be hard and fix that. Oh, but there's hundreds of these. So that's not a good option. So how do you handle that? Well, you can use transfer attributes. It's a tool in Maya that does a couple things, um, but in this case, the most useful feature of it is that it can transfer the surface normals from one object to the other via projection. What does that mean? Well, it's easier to show you. So I'll create a sphere, move it up roughly to the center of this hair. And I'll move both of these so that it's easier to see what I'm talking about. So about there. Yep. Let's come back a little. Okay. It's important that it be roughly centered because this is it needs to project out radially to the rest of the hair in a, in a fairly accurate way. So I'll click the sphere, click the hair, and this is under your mesh. Transfer attributes will open the option box. We don't want the vertex position, we do want the normal. We don't care about these, so we'll turn those off. Sample space set to world. That is where this is and where this is physically should represent how it's going to calculate the transfer. Local would be incorrect for this because it's all based on the relative position, component no, UV, we haven't even done UVs. We'll come back to that though. Topology, that's something else as well. That's useful if you're copying um, information from one mesh that's been deformed and duplicated into another mesh. Mirroring, we don't want, and the search method, this is very important needs to be closest to point. Click transfer. And now 
the normals for the hair make sense from every angle. And you might think, okay, well, great, I'm done. I can just delete this sphere, but watch what happens. What happened? We've lost the information. Undo that. You see here, transfer attributes node in the history. It needs that. It needs this information so long as that node exists. So before we delete the sphere, we want to delete by type, history, and now I can delete this extraneous sphere and keep all of that information. And we'll move it back. So there. Now the nice thing about using Vroid is that not only do I get clean, quadragulated topology straight out of the box, I also get aligned UVs. These are axis aligned. It goes base to tip on the y-axis of the UVs. They're overlapping, but of course if that is an issue for whatever you're doing, you can always grab the shells and move them. Each lock of hair is its own individual shell, which allows you to do things um, in a material shader pretty easily. But yeah, so there's there's no extra work here. There you go. Awesome hair, super quick.